Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, for those of you who have been uh, watching my videos, uh, the last video I did was uh, an abandoned turnpike ride up in uh, Pennsylvania near the town of Breezewood. I had a really, really great time, but that particular ride, if you watched my video or my friend Bruce Eclectic's uh, video uh, about the PA Turnpike uh, ride, No Man Left Behind on his uh, video title, uh, you'll see that I experienced flat tires, not once, not twice, but actually three times uh, on three different tires. Now, in the video, you're only going to see a a flat on my front tire and on my rear tire on my Cy Rusher XF900. Uh, the <clears throat> third flat tire I didn't notice until I got home on the second bike, but the uh, when I when I got home the following day my rear tire was flat on that bike, and I can show you a quick shot of that in the video here. All right, well, so today what I want to do, what I'm working to do rather, is uh, work on uh, you know repairing the uh, the flat tires now on the on the on the rear tire on this bike what I've done is I've gone ahead and I put a, a brand new tire on this already and a brand new tube <clears throat> when I say I did it I actually didn't do that I had uh, my local bike shop do that for me they also uh, put new tires on my uh, Trek bike but for today, I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, patch the tube on my Cy Rusher XF900. Now, this is a 29 by 4 uh, tire, so let's see how, how much of a challenge this is to take off. So what I've done is I've deflated the tire already uh, just by uh, taking the, uh, the cap off and, and deflating a bit. So what I'm going to do now is I've, I've released this lock here. And just gonna un un uh, tighten it here, and it should should kind of fall off. Yep, there it goes. A little later. All right, so I've gotten my uh, my tire up here on this little table. I'm thinking it's gonna be a little easier to work with it. And I'm just letting the extra air out. I'm just using an old chopstick, uh, an extra one for one of the Chinese uh, lunches or dinners that we had some time ago. And just go around and kind of lead the tire a little bit. It's doing a lifting motion as I go around here, being very careful not to grab the tube. It's easier as you come around. All right. Next step. Oh yeah, that's right. I've got a tire liner in here too. I think that's definitely the way to go. And there, the rim is off. Just do a visual inspection here. Everything looks good. Just going to go around and wipe the edge of this rim too later. Okay, there's the tube. Well, all right, right there it is. It's a very, very slow leak. You can see right there, it's popping. Right there. So I made a little mark here to indicate the uh, location of it.
All right, so I just used some uh, like uh, window cleaner, and I can see this. Uh, I can see this leak very, very well with it. You can see the the location of it exactly. So what I'm going to do is mark it so that when I go to put my patch on, I'll know exactly where it is. Okay. So that uh, kind of mark stays there. It looks like it does. Good. Oh yeah, it's like two little two little uh, hole punctures there. So we'll get that taken care of. At the bike shop yesterday, uh, they recommended that I use this this stuff here. It's uh, like a pre-glued super patch kit, GP2, whatever that means. And uh, it's got, uh, he was explaining to me, uh, these uh, peel back style patches. So let's pull one out. Oops, is that one there? No, it's a bit of sandpaper, that makes it nice. Okay, and I can see here that it's got like a little layer of uh, vinyl, I guess, over top of it. So what I'm going to do, I'll put my, uh, going to put my sandpaper back in the, the box here because I've got other sandpaper here. I'll save that for being on the trail, so to speak. All right, so I've got my own sandpaper here. Just uh, clicked off and yeah, just looking at this closely, I can see it's like two different little holes there. So that's good. Oh yeah, I can see the holes even better now. Now this tire was supposed to have slime in it and I would have thought the slime would have uh, helped me more than it did. Maybe it did. Take off all that debris. Right there. All right, so one thing I'm thinking is right now the tire is larger than it would be in the bike. So I'm gonna let a little air out. Okay. Well, the tire is nice and soft now. It's not really stretching so much. So on this patch, I'm just going to go ahead and peel back a corner. And because the bike direction is the wheel direction is a certain way. I want to be mindful of that. So I'll put that right over top. Well, no, I'm not going to give it more air because if I gave it more air, it would expand and that would uh, affect that so but I went all around the rest of the tire I didn't see any uh, other leaks so hopefully that was it so let me go ahead and fit this back in all right so I'm gonna go with putting the tube in first since that seems to be pretty easy to do and what I'm going to do is I noticed the mark on the tire right here. So I'm going to try to get that patch right on that mark. So I just know where it is in between these two red marks for the future. Okay. That's not bad. Get this 
liner here. Let's see. In between those two red marks. Mana mana. Mana mana. Mana mana. Mana mana. Mana mana. And then the tread all along here. All right, now the really fun part's going to be putting the rim back. All right, so the key would be the valve stem. A few inches later. All right, well, the key to this is really patience, I think, <laughs> so. There we go. All right, I believe I have everything kind of sort of on here. Notice my valve stem's a little bit wonky. So I've given it a little bit of air and I'm holding right now at about 16 pounds. So what I'll do is I'll just, oh, just went down. Um, yeah, just went up. Okay. It's probably okay. I'm going to pump it up to 18. And we'll come back and check this a little later. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this on the bike now. All right, well, while I had this wheel off, what I did is I got, I got in this bearing here and just put some of my chain lubricant on that I had. And I did that on both sides. I have no idea if it's really going to do anything or not. But I figured while I had it off easy access, let me go ahead and... Uh, Put some on there. It's time to have a go at putting the wheel back on. So obviously the more challenging thing here would be to line up the disc. And I'll try to get this as good as I can. Okay. So it's kind of hard to see, but I got right inside that slot. right inside that slot oops yeah the hard, hardest thing was to line that up I mean it's not that hard but it's the trickiest thing I guess so now here you know loosening this up I really did to get the wheel to come off I really did decrank it a little bit so let me make sure I have it all the way up which I kind of do oh yeah A little hammer here. And it should be good and tight. I'll probably regret making it that tight, but on the trail. Let's see if my brakes work. Oh yeah. Well, in the end, you know, I, I did have a really good time on that bike ride with my friends. I got to meet my new friend Bruce, uh, my old friend Steve and his sons, and made two or three more, well four now I think about it, new friends there on the trail too, but uh, you know, it was no big deal. I, you know, okay, I had to change the tire. Well, guess what? I got two bikes, I better know how to do that. Uh, my other bike, just one thing real quick. Uh, I did 
run that into the shop and had them replace uh, both tires on that, even though I only had a flat on the back and uh, had them put new tubes in there. Uh, I didn't put them, have them put any slime in. What I'm planning to do is put uh, a product called flat out or no flat inside these, uh, these tires so that I'll try to avoid this issue in the future. I've heard really good things about that, that material. So um, on the uh, Trek Marlin, uh, I did uh, upgrade to a XR3 uh, bike tire. Uh, it was kind of a surprise that both of them you know, I went ahead and did both of them, not just the one, because the back tire was bad, but um, when I went to go to the checkout, the uh, the clerk there was, you know, really nice team up there, and this is in Westminster, Maryland. He told me, uh, hey, guess what? Those, tire those tires are on sale. So I said, well, hey, right there, go ahead and put both tires on. And uh, the concern was, would it, would it actually fit on a, uh, a Marlin? Because the other, I think these tires are about a 2.5 or 2.6, and I'll put that in the description. So the concern was, well, what kind of clearance would we have in this area? But uh, it seems to be fine. All right, well, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, you know, changing a tire. Yeah, I used to do it all, all the time when I was a kid, back when I had, you know, my old Stingray type bikes and 10 speeds and such. But uh, it's a little frustrating. Uh, the key would really be that I, I would pass along the name by just be really, really patient. Don't be in a rush. Take your time and get that, uh, that tire back on there without repuncturing it. Okay, well... Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye for now.